let's turn it into a slasher movie right now. I'm going to tell you a whole bunch of, like, I guess, slasher movie character superlative type things. And you tell me which Why the Last Man actor would best suit this description. First one is, who is the most likely not to realize that they're in a horror movie and to go and investigate a strange noise and run right into the killer. Diana Bang, Dr. Allison Mann, who you haven't met yet, but just wait folks, because this woman is a force. As someone who's seen some of those episodes can confirm. I'm obsessed with Diana Bang and Dr. Mann. All right, the next one here. Who is the most likely to sacrifice themselves for the rest of the group? Obviously, 355, Ashley Romans. But she'll do it really arrogantly, probably. Not Ashley. Ashley is <laughs> a joy of a human being, but 355, the character. Am I supposed to be answering with the character? Who is the most likely to trip and fall while running from the killer? Dr. Mann. Diana Bay. <laughs> She's also, she's like a comedy genius. Who is the most likely to just give up at the start? Basically say, you know, like, F this, it's too scary, I'm leaving. Definitely Sam, my love, Elliot Fletcher. He's the one who'd be like, I've seen way too many horror movies for this. <laughs> I know what happens. Who is the most likely to be the last one standing? Kimberly, played by Amber Tamblyn. Or, or Nora, played by Marin Ireland. But I would like to see those two duke it out. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for a brand new episode of Collider Ladies Night. I'm very excited about this check because you all should be watching Why the Last Man on FX on Hulu right now and checking out the incredible work from Olivia Thurlby. Hello, so nice to meet you, and big congratulations on this show. Thank you so much, Perry. I'm so happy to be here. I've got a list of eight random questions here. You get three rolls on the dice tower, and then those are the three questions that we start with, at least. Two is a new one. This is called Game Show. If you could be on the game show of your choice, what would you pick and why? The first thing that comes to mind is a game show that doesn't even exist, which is like a game show of Yahtzee, because suddenly with these dice, I'm feeling like I'm playing Yahtzee. And I just played Yahtzee for the very first time, and I had unbelievable beginner's luck. Um, I sort of cleaned up, so I feel already like I'm doing really, really well in this imaginary Yahtzee game show. You should pitch that around. Make it happen. I bet you <laughs> someone out there would pick up a Yahtzee game show. Why not? <laughs> Three is called downtime. What is your favorite way to pass the time between filming scenes on set? There's no cut and dry answer because it depends on which two scenes are you shooting? Like, did you just finish the hard one and now later you don't have any lines or is it the other way around? It's all a head game. But if the stakes are low, probably eating. I probably want to eat something, snack just as much as I possibly can. I'm pretty powerless to be able to avoid like like a caffeinated beverage. Like if someone's like, hey, do you want a coffee? Even if I don't, I'll be like, yeah, that's not a snack. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I think drinking liquids is the same as snacking, but if there's one thing that I feel like I, I have a real vice about on set, I think it's, I think it's caffeine. More TV. If you could guest star on the TV show of your choice, what would you pick and why? I would like to guest star on Big Mouth. I would love to voice one of those characters. And why? Because that show uh, has made me laugh alone deeper and harder than I've laughed alone in a long time. <laughs> so how do you get to making your very first feature film role in a Paul Greengrass movie? Actually, my first film that I, that I did, uh, it was a film called The Secret. Um, which uh, I, I don't think it ever got released in this country, in the United States, but um, it was, uh, that was like my big break. I got that role um, when I was a senior in high school. I was 18 years old and 
um, I withdrew my applications to the various drama schools that I was trying to get into because I wanted to take the opportunity and go shoot that job. So that was just kind of one of those things that came out of nowhere. And I remember at the time I was really bummed because I had not gotten into Juilliard, which was my dream. <laughs> and I was really down and depressed and sort of feeling bad about myself. Um, and then this came along and it was a wild ride. And then being able to go uh, shoot that film, um, which was sort of like a crash course in doing it because it was actually the lead role in a feature film. So I was very green, uh, but very dedicated and um, had a great group of people around me who were really loving and, and supported me through it. Through doing that job, I got some managers um, and then the like auditions just started rolling in. Let us jump ahead to Juno right now. At that point, you had had a good deal of experience, but Diablo Cody dialogue is just, it's so unique and so specific. And from my limited perspective, it kind of feels like working with dialogue like that and make it, making it work is so dependent on the actor just nailing the timing and the intonation. So what was it like tackling that kind of dialogue and did you find it challenging? Diablo's writing is definitely one of a kind. And I think that's part of what made the script this sort of wild magnet for all of these people who just read it and said, what is this? This is incredible. Never read anything like it. And what I remember at the time, and this was like a really long time ago at this point, bear in mind, but that it was so exciting to read something that was in a voice that was unlike anything else. And I remember just taking to it. I think the biggest part about doing that kind of dialogue is not to overthink it because there's so much going on on the page. There's so many words. It's so expressive. Um, it's so uh, colorful and dynamic. The idea is just not to do a lot. And I don't think I necessarily succeeded in that. Again, I'm going to like go back to the being really, really young thing. Um, but uh I remember just having fun. Let's get into Why the Last Man. I know it was a journey to actually make this show happen and get it off the ground. And then you have some of the cast who was attached as early as 2018, but the news broke about your casting in late 2020. So did the Why the Last Man casting process feel extremely different compared to other casting processes you've been through? I think everything about Why the Last Man has felt extremely different than anything I've ever been a part of. And that's for a lot of reasons. The biggest, the backdrop, of course, is COVID and the nature of a global pandemic and what it means, like what a casting process means during that, as well as what it means to actually film a show during that. But then the other really different part of this show is the way that it's being made and the people that are making it and the just sort of experience that was there to be had um, and the creative experience and the social experience and the all of it. So um, without a global pandemic, I probably wouldn't have been in Why the Last Man because um, they were gearing up to film um, with a slightly different cast uh, in March of 2020 when it fell apart. And um, so the sort of the, the reason that I got to come on board um, was because that had happened. Um, and the casting process was interesting for it because it happened so quickly. And sometimes things like that do. Um, but this was something that came into my field. Um, and then a few weeks later, my whole life was kind of turning upside down as I was moving to Toronto to shoot this job. So it was, it, it also came at a time when I wasn't certain what the film industry looked like anymore. I didn't know if there would ever be more jobs. I, it, 
it came really out of nowhere. Um, and so I think there was a part of it there too that was surprising because um, I had doubts about whether I would be working at all again ever. <laughs> and then and then I was. So you go through that whirlwind casting process. You even said there was another cast that was going to go and shoot the show originally. And then on top of that, you're working with very popular source material. So with all that in mind, when you get the role and you start your work on it, how do you make the role your own? Where do you draw the line between the source material, the prep work that had been done before and what you want Hero to be? It was actually pretty easy because I think that the version of Hero that Eliza Clark created was already very expanded upon compared to in the source material. So in the comic books, we uh, pretty much the first time we meet Hero or the second time we meet Hero, um, it's the first time post event. She's already in the Amazons and we never get the story of what happened to her to get her there. And um, in Why the Last Man, the TV show, um, pretty much the entire first season is spent exploring a journey that doesn't exist in the comics. So the foundation of who Hero is is absolutely laid in the comics, but the depth of her story arc exists independently of the comics. So uh, it was really fun to read the comics because they're amazing. And I loved getting a sense of what we were trying to capture and the scope of the world and the scope of the story while I was reading them. Um, and I also loved knowing that the story that I was going to get to tell was fleshed out and human in a way that goes beyond what the comics laid down. I got to ask you about the ambulance scene. And I feel like this is going to get convoluted because I have a million questions I want to ask about this. But maybe let's do what, yeah. what do you find more challenging when filming a sequence like that? Is it the escalation and the blocking of a moment like the fight portion of it or is it the portion of it that is pretty much you just sitting there by yourself on camera no dialogue processing what just happened and also what could happen next that's interesting that was a that's a it's a hard scene to film because there is a really big physical component and there is a stunt that has to happen, um, which was like very well rehearsed with amazing stunt coordinator and uh, stunt performers who were there sort of just to support us and, you know, be there if we needed them. And um, it's hard to film a scene that is emotionally demanding as well as technically demanding because a stunt uh, needs to be executed t in a technical way so that it's captured properly on camera and most importantly, so that nobody gets hurt. Sort of combining that with the emotional stakes. It, it is, it's just, de it's demanding. So that's kind of the, one of the hardest parts of the scene, for sure. In terms of the other parts of the scene, meaning like what happens the next day, because that's actually was that it was actually filmed not only on a different day but actually at a different location that makes it challenging in its own way because you have to be connected to what you've already done i think that we shot that scene that happens the next morning before we filmed um the part of the scene that happens the night before there's an element of, well, how much blood would there be and where would it be? Because we haven't shot the thing yet where all the blood comes out. So that's some, that's some guesswork. Um, and, uh, you know, something about Hero that often would come in and save me is that I think she has a tendency to go really numb sometimes. And I think that that's sort of where she's at. By the time we catch up with her the next morning and she's just been sitting in that ambulance all night in a pool of blood, knowing that her life as she knows it is over and that she's in a lot of trouble. She's pretty numb. I think she's been through it. I think she's been through hell. 
So I was uh, able to lean into that and knowing that there wasn't some insane expression of emotion that needed to be happening in that moment because that wasn't that wasn't the arc of where she was anymore. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with us Thank on you. Ladies Night. Big congrats on Why the Last Man and on your entire filmography, which I seriously do love. Thank you again. Congratulations. And everybody out there, check out Why the Last Man on FX on Hulu right now.